recently here on the channel we've been talking about the marvel's recent flop don't click off okay i know i've made like three marvel's videos and i'm not going to make you sit through another one of those okay i'm a nice rocky i do nice things for people so what we're going to be talking about today is actually the subject of the title we've got a little bit of an update about shang chi the second film following the ten rings basically uh you know we also got a little bit of information about some rumors regarding potential castings for Doctor Doom going forward with, you know, a Fantastic Four film and whatnot, and to hopefully in the future bring the X-Men in and, you know, maybe build up to a new villain in Doctor Doom. I don't want them to just totally, like, shoo away what they've been building with Kang, especially considering Loki was so good, so to see them just toss that entire storyline to the side would feel very sad and, like, it just is a waste of a great storyline. But, uh, generally speaking, I think Cillian will would look really good for the role he is a little bit skinnier than i would imagine doom like my friend kind of mentioned i picture him not like as a big dude or like a stocky dude or even a buff dude but just kind of like a a little bit more normal looking dude cillian looks a little bit like a, a, a skeletor and listen that's fine it's one of his best features actually but i i would be interested to see like what he would look like a little bulked up for this film uh besides that however uh you know we still don't know if they're going to be moving away from kang because of you know the recent issues with the, uh, uh fuck how jonathan majors i don't know how i forgot his name for a moment uh and we also really don't know when we're getting a fantastic four film if we're getting one when we're going to be getting the you know x-men uh you know coming in we do know of course that in the deadpool 3 movie we're going to be getting wolverine which is going to be the first official tie-in with marvel and the overall X-Men universe, so that will be fun. But there's a lot just still left to the unknown of what direction they're going to go for which stories and how exactly they're going to do it. Now, in the middle of all that, we've had some of the other characters that they've been trying to build up. For example, we had the Falcon and Winter Soldier show, which kind of showed his move, Falcons, you know, moving from the position that he was in over to the Captain America position. And the entire situation in that show was just absolutely atrocious like it was terrible acting terribly written I it, I was so stunned that Twisted Metal was decent because of how bad Anthony Mackie was in that and how bad the damn script was for that although I know the script isn't his problem uh, but we have these characters that you know maybe you've seen them in a show a little bit or maybe you've gotten one movie of them like Shang-Chi and we haven't really seen them again you know when we look back to the Avengers and we look back to like Iron Man and Thor and all this I believe that each one of them got a couple movies prior except maybe Captain America didn't uh, generally speaking though that way you could get a little bit more feel for this world for these characters that they're trying to build their backstories what makes them tick you know what they love what they hate etc and that's what makes it so unique and special when you finally get to the large crossover films you have a fully fleshed out character who on their own is already great and so then you hope that by mixing them all together you get something greater than even the sum of their parts combined generally I think that that kind of hype worked for the couple of first couple Avengers films all the way even through Endgame but we haven't gotten in another uh, Avengers film yet and it just all feels very hollow it feels like a lot of what we've seen in these various films very much felt like just kind of filler in the MCU to keep things being pumped out and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that they just started making all of these low tier shows basically these shows were pumped out and a lot of them had some real good creation of genius behind them however then they would have people come in and completely like edit them or uh, you know fuck them over make them do rewrites whatever it might be that then ends up with a really shitty project you know that was one of the big things apparently with she-hulk is that they that show ended up being 200 million dollars not because it deserved to be or needed to be but because they had an entire show planned out and filmed and edited i think even but then when it was shown to the executives they didn't like it and stated that she-hulk needed to become She-Hulk earlier as in the original cut she didn't become actual She-Hulk until the last episode and it was supposed to be much more of a legal drama rather than some weird meta comedy. I think that that would have worked a lot better if the executives let it stick in that way and just kind of stuck to their guns and allowed the creative vision to play out. However, they often don't do that. They often have some sort of quota that you need to do. And listen, to a certain degree I can understand saying, "Hey, we uh, the show is called She-Hulk. We don't want to wait to give the people She-Hulk until the very last episode. We need to, you know, let 
let them feel like they're actually getting a moment with the character i can understand that uh, also from just a writing position and knowing how scripts are done and you know seeing my friend go through film school tim and all this other stuff i understand that to a degree when you look at you know scripts you can see certain things that need to be changed and one of those things is like if you have a conflict it's better to get into that early so that way you can grapple people with that and you can grip people with that and that way they stay there through the rest of the film and they have a reason to be there you know oftentimes though it feels like a lot of these shows don't have that or they do and then they just toss it to the side WandaVision is a great example of this where WandaVision had a really good couple of episodes and then it dives into the boring Marvel shit and the entire rest of the time pretty much just plays out as the typical Marvel formula. On top of that we have shows like Moon Knight which had some very very top tier moments and actually had a great story arc where he there's this character who is basically you know mentally unwell and he creates an alternate personality that he you know uh, gives half of his problems to and sees as another individual and basically he interacts with him throughout this show until he realizes that hey this is a construct of mine that I made to help me cope but I'm better now I can do this on my own I can shed this construct and not just just let myself be me however and, and, and listen this is a great message that's a perfect message like overall the idea is that obviously if you have a mental like mental issue like that you can't just get rid of it usually and that sucks you know you have to take medication all that is terrible but the idea to choose to be better and to choose to shed things that you no longer need that were coping mechanisms is always a healthy and important thing to do however then for some reason the next episode they bring the fucking uh, construct right back and they say no it's good for him to have this childish mindset of keeping and holding on to absolutely everything and they actually need each other it's teamwork once again as always with disney that makes the fucking thing happen i guess it was very stupid and again these are the types of things that made me see that Marvel has a lot of potential in some ways but has been just throwing a lot of filler out there because they refuse to let anybody actually do anything great with the story the first time that they've been able to do so has been loki season one and two loki season one and two felt like a completely coherent thought out from front to back they knew in season one what was going to happen in season two type film or type series that absolutely just was a masterpiece from front to back had so much thematic elements Elements, had so much character growth was just a, a lovely character dive into everything we knew about Loki and everything we knew about Marvel I would love to see more of that but we just haven't been getting it I think Shang-Chi though in my own personal opinion I know other people disagree with me I thought it was very good I thought Shang-Chi was one of the ones that had a good amount of really interesting um, you know some storytelling that was interesting but a lot of the storytelling was fairly traditional what I really enjoyed was the merging of traditional with uh, you know uh, like new age storytelling where basically we have this Marvel film but they also utilized various things like this image of this dragon uh, you know comes in towards the end of the film where basically it's his family dragon on his mother's side that blows the the bubbles or whatever into the you know the sun and the bubbles seem to represent the father's side and it's almost a situation where like he even though his father is evil he has to come through and pull together the best parts of both sides in order to do something great and overcome the evil that his father has succumbed to like these are fucking amazing story beats that what had just top tier imagery all through and through especially in the end fight uh so generally speaking i loved the movie so i but again i know a lot of people didn't get uh, like look at it in that way so if you guys you know are interested in shang chi 2 i'm definitely curious to hear if you are or not but generally speaking i'm sorry i've been rambling this entire time about the current state of the mcu but we are uh, uh basically got a slight update stating that aquafina has come out and said that there is an idea going forward on how to bring the characters back basically teasing that she will be returning to the mcu in the future the current theory is that we're going to be getting it potentially in between like secret wars and the kang dynasty movie and so they're thinking that somewhere around the end of 2026 might be when we're going to get it you know we'll start getting a little bit more information on the story aspects and other pieces of it but i do think that this is a necessary thing to do if we want sean chi to be a real serious player in any future avengers movie i enjoy the character like i said and so for 
for the most part as, lo as long as they continue to do it right I I'll be happy to see this one I definitely am going to be seeing Deadpool um, but otherwise like uh, you know there's not very many Marvel movies I'm that excited about you know I'm curious to see if they stick with the Kang thing I'm hoping that they allow that to be as cool as it can be but what do you guys think are you guys interested in Shang-Chi 2 are you not interested at all with the current state of the MCU besides that uh, you know let me know anything else that you uh, think about the current state of the MCU yourselves. I know we've been having some good conversations uh, in the comments, so thank you guys so much for doing so. On top of that, you can follow us here for more movie news and reviews. You can follow us on movie sessions for trailer content, smoking sessions here for movie news and reviews. I already said that. Uh, you can follow us over on gaming sessions for gaming content and the Tri Podcast for our podcast channel. All right, guys, I'll see you all in the next one. Abducted by my brain and it drains all the dopamine Pain leaving nothing but the dreams and